Hi guys, how is everyone doing? It's a uh, Friday. That has got to be good news for people. This is mine and David's flat I'm vlogging from. Not the final flat, we're still flat hunting. <laughs> um, so, aye, but I'm in here today because this is where I live. So let's do it. I have had quite a lot of private messages to my Instagram and on YouTube asking just really what happened in the end with Emma and it's how did, how did it all go down when obviously you were pregnant and leaving so just I thought right best way to do it is I'll just do it in a wee video and I'll try and keep this as short and as simple as possible because it's such a complicated story so if I lose you along the way I'm sorry but I'm going to try and keep it simple okay and also I, I, I get just know that what I'm saying is they're all it's just my personal experience and somebody else might have had another experience that was worse or an experience that was better but this is just what I chose to do based on the advice that I was given and how I was feeling at the time so just take all of that into into thought and also bear in mind that I was so stressed out and scared <laughs> because obviously when you find out you're pregnant and you're not with your partner it's hard it's just it was hard so this is my wee story found out I was pregnant and I had a roster that only got me to the end of October I didn't oh sorry no the end of November and I found out halfway through November so I thought okay I uh, have to hand my notice in because just the way this is so 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 random so I knew from I knew already girls who had fallen pregnant and Emirates don't have a sort of system where they put you onto ground staff or they find something else for you to do or they allow you to to work sort of in your first trimester they don't have that so Basically, you're grounded straight away. And if you tell them when it's you're pregnant, when you've been in the company for three years or longer and you're married, it's handled the way that you would expect it to be handled. You get given your maternity leave, you you go on your break, you have your baby, you then have obviously your six months to a year, depending on how long you wish to take, and then you can come back if you want to. However, I'd only been with the company for a year and a half at this stage so I wasn't entitled to and I didn't qualify for those benefits so I knew that and obviously I wasn't married so my only option was to hand in my notice because there's no other option for me and I didn't tell my company I was pregnant because <laughs> um, I'd recently flown with a supervisor and he was so and it was actually on a flight to Glasgow and he was so so stressed out on this flight and I had a word with him and I said I was like is everything okay his name is Mohammed and he was oh and I just I thank God to this day that I, I met him because he was the nicest most kindest man and then I saw and he was like actually I'm not okay when I land I have to leave the crew not go to the hotel I have to go straight to the maternity hospital in Glasgow and I was like, oh my god, I thought, oh, who's had a baby? I was so excited for him. And this was before I found out I was pregnant myself. And oh, 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 hang on, readjusting myself, hang on. Um, he was like, it's my girlfriend. I was like, you, you had a baby? I was like, oh my god, you, you had a baby. So she's just given birth and he's jumped on this flight, he's swapped onto it just to try and get the layover to see the baby. Obviously he was going to call in sick on the layover, but that's fine, we all do that. And then he was telling me, the reason why he was so stressed out is that he'd really just had a bad experience with the whole thing. So they had, she was in work, she was working for Emirates and she fell pregnant. She was from Glasgow and again she hadn't been with the company for three years but he figured it'll be fine. He's been with the company for about six, seven years. You know, they're in a very committed relationship, blah, 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 blah. So they found out they were both pregnant in Dubai. We thought right let's go to the hospital and just get it confirmed and checked out so they went to the hospital Gar garhood hospital i think he mentioned and they told the doctor and you when you go to the doc the hospital in in dubai you have like you have to show proof 
of where your insurance is coming from. So obviously they, they said, we both work for Eminence as cabin crew, this is the number to call, or that here's my insurance. I don't really know how that bit went down, but you can do it in a few different ways. And the doctors there at the hospital called Emirates, not to confirm like insurance details or anything, they called Emirates to let them know that one of their cabin crew was pregnant. And then what happened next, the girl was pregnant, she was deported straight away. She wasn't entitled to her last paychecks. She didn't receive them. This is what Mohammed told me, okay? And from just the way that I know the company and the way that, just the way that he expressed it, I just, I'm gonna just take his word for it. If it's wrong, it's wrong, but okay. So, and then she wasn't entitled to her last wages, which is, I guess, because they would have a cut off point, things like that, of when you're entitled to them, when you're not entitled to them. And she basically had to had to leave the country immediately and she wasn't allowed back in. She was automat automatically dismissed, etc, etc. And uh, it's a Muslim country. I completely I completely respect the fact that you're, we're, I'm not married and I can see why that could be an issue. Um, but I didn't want to go through the stress of being deported like that. So that's why I chose not to tell my employer. So I now basically have to work my notice and make sure for the next four weeks notice they don't find out I'm pregnant. <laughs> Which well, sounds horrific but I had a wee plan in motion. So I had done a flight to Sydney, I landed back I think about four o'clock in the morning. I had two days off before I had a flight to Singapore. So on those two days off I flew home and first of all I just went out only taking like um the stick test and I thought right no if I'm going to turn my whole life upside down and and leave my job and go back to the UK for good I want to make sure that this I had there's a baby in the oven so then um so I went I came home met David obviously we went to the doctors and straight away we got it confirmed yep you're pregnant and then I also paid I went private for an ultrasound just to super confirm it <laughs> it sounds insane but you know um and yeah the my baby was there so I was like okay let we, babe, I have to hand down my notice now. Here we go. So, I didn't want to fly too much being pregnant. It's completely safe. I asked the doctor, it's a thousand percent safe to fly, but just long haul flight after long haul flight is eminent. The, the, the flights I had lined up was Singapore, which was eight hours there, eight hours back, and then I had Sydney and Christchurch, which is like 14 hours there, but it was a five day trip. So I thought, okay, if I do that one, I can do that, and then that's me, I can manage. So it's okay, and then I had my friend Louise was there, and I was gonna rest the whole five days, and it was just gonna be fine. So I was out station, so I was in Glasgow on my days off. I got the doctor to write me a sick note, saying that I was unable to fly back, so I handed that into Emirates. I said that I had stomach problems. <laughs> and then, so I was off for my Singapore flight, which was great. It meant that I could stay home for another two days and just rest and form a plan. Then I handed in my notice. And then I flew back to Dubai and then I made my flight to Sydney, which was absolutely amazing. It was I was so lazy on that flight and I'm so sorry to all the crew on that flight. For the whole trip, we had Sydney, a layover, then a wee tour flight to Christchurch, layover, tour flight back to Sydney, layover, and then the flight back to Dubai. And then for all those five flights, I think I did nothing. And I'm so sorry, <laughs> but I just couldn't because I had the worst morning sickness ever and I was just on the plane like, oh god, I'm going to be sick everywhere, this is so humiliating. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting there with the red lips and the bun on and everything and I'm just like, oh this is what is what is my life became. It was so, so random. Then I had two weeks of leave because it was David's 30th, so I went to, to Norway, so I was away for two weeks and that was fine. And then I got back to Dubai and then I had 10 days left of my my notice period which was the most stressful 10 days i've ever had in my life i was so panic stricken that they were going to do it because um they, they can do random drug tests on you before you go in for your flight it's very common now um and i was like oh my gosh if i get one and, and they do a urine test and it shows that i'm pregnant i'm so done i'm so done and i just because basically 
I really wanted my wages. Um, I had done so much overtime the previous month and I hadn't been paid yet and then for the month that I was working I was due a lot of money so the whole whack was a, a serious amount of money and I just thought for 10 days work for 10 days I don't want it all taken away from me like I knew in the end it would be okay I really don't think they would imprison me I've heard that obviously that is an option and for some of the companies again just because it's museum i'm not i'm not married i could see why but i was emirates i know that they wouldn't imprison me i know they would just deport me so i didn't want i still didn't want to be deported from the country that would just suck and could you imagine the stress and how do you pack everything and and do you then what happens do you have to pay for your full flight for your home because i cannot afford an emirates flight home so I was just a bit like, oh. So then I had two flights left and they were both to Glasgow because I was trying to get all of like my clothes home and all of my stuff. Uh, and then these flights were so comical. You just, I couldn't even predict it. It's like everything that you've ever heard that could go wrong on, on a flight with passengers did go wrong in these two flights. It was insane. Um, so the first flight to Glasgow, both crew were phenomenal and I made friends and I still, I've still kept in touch with the girls that I've met on these flights because they're just such... Glasgow girls are just amazing and I just love these girls so much. So thank you so much. And they helped me so much without knowing. <laughs> um, so the, the first flight, I was in the middle of a meal service and I was feeling okay, it was all going good. I'd had, I'd had my, I had these bands on to help with my morning sickness, so life was going great for me. And then this man came out of the bathroom and he tapped me, he was like, I really don't feel well. And I was like, okay, so well, let's get you back to your seat. And um, he was a big guy. And, um, and he was sort of putting a lot of weight on me and I was like, oh gosh, darn. and then he just went and then he just completely fainted or passed out in this case. And I was like, oh dear God, I was like, what the heck? And then I, I, I could check him for his breathing. He wasn't breathing. And then so I was like, oh my God, so I shouted out. I was like, I'm starting CPR. And then for about the next three or four minutes, I was doing the CPR and the chest compressions and the breathing. And thank God it was right by my jumpsuit because we have these wee pocket masks. So I was all, like, I had all my stuff, but I was more just like, what is happening? And I've never done CPR before, but my gosh, the, the weight in real life that you have to put down on someone's chest, it really took it out of me and I completely forgot. You're in the very early stages of, of pregnancy, what are you doing, you crazy women? <laughs> Thank gosh, the supervisor came up and they, and they took over and they had a defib and thank god the man was fine it was, it was all good in the end but it was a, just a big shock to the system and then when i landed i got uh, an uber home and then i got back to my mum and i was like mum i don't feel right like my stomach was so sore and she was like right the hospital let's just booby live quite close to the hospital in glasgow so we were like let's just go up and get a wee check and i was explaining to the midwife i was like at this stage I was only like seven weeks pregnant so I was like I'm seven weeks pregnant I'm just doing my notice and I am an air at cabin crew I'm just giving CPR she's like what you can't be doing that that's like you've, you've exerted yourself too much and she did some tests and basically I pulled the ligaments around like my pelvic area and I was like oh Jesus obviously that happened <laughs> and then I was like right okay so no more saving the day I'm not the person to save the day anymore <laughs> And so then I got back to Dubai, I had a day or two and that was fine. And then I had another flight, my last ever flight back to Glasgow. On the way there, fine, great, dumped all my stuff, got the, my last flight back to Dubai. And then this guy was so, 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 so drunk on the flight and I think he'd been taking a mixture of other stuff. He had like wee bags on him and all these wee, like all this pills and stuff dropping out. So I think it was just, he was over medicating or something was going on with him. And he started being so aggressive to towards the crew. Um, so me and this man, oh gosh, what was his name? Adam, Adam, I remember. So me and Adam, another crew member, had, um, he was like, just, he was in the, the front cabin and he was spouting off and he was screaming and, and then there was kids in that cabin and he was being, just being really aggressive. So we went up and we were like, sir, you need to settle down, sit down, blah, blah, blah. And then he punched Adam, who was right in front of me and Adam went down. And I was just like, oh my god, if he, and then he came at me and he tried to like punch me and I held his punch. And then I was like, what am I doing again? Here I am, this point, still, still seven weeks pregnant. Um, then this guy wants to punch me in the face and I was like, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> and at that point, I was just like, um, it's my last flight. 
we're two hours from home i'm done working and i went to first class and i just sat in first class for the rest of the flight and the purser was so sound he was just so nice about it i was like i'm sorry i'm not dealing with this anymore i, I no longer i'm done <laughs> and then, so those are my flights <laughs> and then well I ended, I had five days and at this point I had to close down bank accounts, pay off phone bills, all of that and it was just as you can imagine. Looking back it was just the most comical time in my life. It was like who leaves their job like this? Who has to sneak around like this? Who has to pretend to be working but not really working? And I was just oh it's fine it's but it kind of isn't fine at the same time but that's what happens i guess when you're in a country that just doesn't recognize your maternity rights so very interesting very 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 interesting but that's that's my story anyway so leaving with a big pile of stress <laughs> but it was it was all good in the end so what can I say? It's fine and it's just a blessing, but yeah. I hope everyone has an amazing weekend. Thank you so much for watching. Don't leave me hate comments. <laughs> Thank you. That's me and I'll, I'll post a wee video um, on anything that anyone wants. Just ask me. I'll always, I'll always do it within reason. Let's not get pervy. <laughs> okay. Um, have a good day guys. God bless. Bye bye.